Hi everyone, welcome to today's video and I think I'm crooked. Trying to put my phone in a different position. Um, I actually don't, you know, I always set my phone on a holder and use it as like a video camera because my phone has that kind of options. Um, but I'm being told, you know, it's not putting it in the right kind of display for people to watch. So, I'm going to try this. My husband's looked at it. I think it's not fixable because of how my phone update was. But we're going to make it happen. So, I have an event I have to go to tonight. I have to look good. I'm getting ready. Um, my eyebrows are on. I've got my Osmosis foundation on in uh, natural medium. It sounds dark, but it's really not. I'm very, very fair skinned. Um, I used to tan all the time, but I kind of stopped. Not kind of, did. Also, I've got Invisalign this morning at my dentist, so my mouth is full of junk. I'm not used to having my mouth full of junk. So it's like plastic braces. You know, I have all the glue on, brackets. I have all the trays that snap into the brackets. It's a lot of stuff. I know I don't talk the best to begin with, but with Invisalign, it's going to make it quite challenging. I started with my Tatcha the silk canvas. I mean, I'm still pretty hooked on this as a primer. Mega. Especially on mature skin, it's very moisturizing. I think even if you had combination skin, this would work really well um, for a mature face. And I'm going to spray on some, of course, my Lila B. This is considerate food for your skin. Absolutely wonderful. Tap it in with your sponge. I have on my concealer, which was my Osmosis Concealer, my new Holy Grail. Used my moisture stick. I did film that, but my phone like tumped. So and and since it updated, I have no um I have no pause options anymore. I used to have my recorder on my phone used to have pause options. Not there anymore. I can't pause any videos. So I'm going to set with my Hourglass Luminous Light. And I'm just going to get my face on. Um, I won't talk so much about tips and tricks. I'm just going to talk to you guys. What do you think? I have an idea about filming, and to me it sounds like a really great idea. I'm going to take you guys to the grocery store. I thought, hey, why not? I mean, I learned it. Why don't I share what I learned or my knowledge or whatever at the grocery store? Reading labels, because I'm always talking to you guys about reading labels, but yet... I've never went to read a label with you guys. I think it would need to be kind of short and sweet, like maybe just a few products, and have like a pretty short conversation about, you know, what I tend to go with. I'm just searching for my NAR, sorry guys. And, you know, and what I tend to eat, eat clean with. Just give you guys like ideas, options. Maybe I'll say something you guys never thought of, and it might be dong, 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 dong. Oh, yeah, I could do that. That's how I learn a lot of stuff in nutrition, watching, listening, studying, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, dong. I should have been doing that all along, but I wasn't. So, I'm putting on some NARS concealer with my Chanel brush. Nothing is super changed there. I have used concealer, like my under eye concealer, 
as my eyeshadow concealer per se to set my eyes but guess what guys I figured out or found out through trial and error it just doesn't work as good as the NARS um, for lasting no cracking you can come home at 11 o'clock at night and your eyeshadow is just like bang right there nothing will happen to it and nothing sets your eyes like NARS light one now I've never tried that under my eye but I've heard other people talk about it but they're much younger so I think it would it seems like it would be way too heavy for my under eye at this age that it would just kind of accentuate so I've learned this padding thing I watched it on a video I thought hmm now that makes good sense so right before I set my under eye I just use my fingers to make sure that I have absolutely no creasing so I'm not setting a crease and you see I'm just dusting and you can see the powder in my lights because I don't want to be like <laughs> bake it on I'm not against it. I think I could have baked when I was younger. Definitely. Um, I've tried to bake as an old woman, per se. It just didn't turn out for me. Um, maybe it would turn out for you guys, but definitely did not turn out for me because I have wrinkles and I have some discoloration. I have things I don't want to accentuate. I found that baking just kind of baked into the flaws, per se. If I had completely smooth under eyes, I might bake away, but I don't. So, my look, I need to look very good tonight. I am dusting. I decided to use Soft Glam um, because I love this palette. I absolutely love it. It has a lot of kick in the pan. It has a lot of kick when it goes on. But if you prepare for it, the performance of the eyeshadow and the blending is bar none. So I'm using, you can see the kick in my fan, you can see it in my lights. Yes, but prepare for the kick. I'm putting on the very first shadow in the top row, the very left shadow. It's called Tempera, maybe, if that's how you say it, or close enough. And I am using this as a base for all the rest of my eyeshadow. And I'm using the brush that came with it. I've talked about this brush before. It's actually a pretty doggone dang good brush. It's not weighted well for me. I like a brush that's weighted properly because it makes a huge difference in how the brush how easy it is to use and I think amateurs you know I don't get paid to put on makeup um, but I have really spent a lot of hours learning and perfecting the craft I imagine if I wanted to pay, <laughs> go put somebody's face on I could give it a shot but I'll leave that to the young girls and just share with you, you know, my older lady beauty. Okay, so what about going to the store? What do you guys think? This is orange soda. Third one in, top row. I switched my brush, a Morphe 535. This is that big, fat, fluffy blender that is really making my makeup these days I mean for the past I don't know three weeks now that I've switched it up between this one 
and my Morphe the Southern Blender R37. Beautiful brush. Um, it's a tighter made brush. It's not as fluffy as this one. Um, it, but that's what I always start in my makeup with. And then I decided to give this fatter bar barreled headed brush a try. It was, it's amazing how much easier it is. How much time it cuts down. I know I've said this before. But I'm like so encouraging you guys to try a fat, fluffy, thick blender. Good brush. 535. And these brushes price points. You cannot be a Morphe price point. Go to their website, Morphe.com. I mean, you can pick up brushes for $2 that are quality synthetic brushes. I mean, you cannot beat this company's products on many, many levels. Some of their eyeshadow palettes are out of this world, $29, $25, $35. You just can't beat it. They're quality, quality shadows. Now, using Anastasia tonight, or it's late afternoon for me, but I am really addicted to this palette, and I'm wearing kind of black slacks off the shoulder, you know, straight across, blouse with the big bell sleeves and a big bow type thing. Um... And a black heel, not a pump. Um, my toes are done at all times. And I'm just building up my crease color. So I get it to where I want it with this orange sodi. It's Friday. Now I'm going to switch to burnt. And one more time with the same brush, and then I'm going to switch brushes. Really loving this palette. So, let me guys, let me guys, let me know, you guys, in the comments section, if you think going to the grocery store with me is something you guys would like. Um, I hope so because I'm just <laughs> I'm gonna do it probably this weekend if I can knock it out. Um, I've got a hefty schedule this weekend, so we've got one more basic week to train for the horse show. So I'll be hitting it hard at the gym. I'm gonna use rustic, and I'm gonna drop it lower. And remember, use a light hand, ladies. Light hand. This means no pushing. I know I say that a lot, but you're just letting the brush do the work for you and glide across. And since I'm older, my eye skin is loose. They call it crepey. Uh, I don't like that word, but hey, it's true. I'm trying not to disrupt my skin on my eye. I don't want to move my loose skin around because it doesn't make for great eyeshadow application. And I am just blending, blending, blending. Make sure you keep your hands loose on your brush. Don't grip it tight because you're going to get a cramp. I believe there's really not e <laughs> there's nothing called too much blending in this world. I mean, you could blend for an hour if you wanted to, but I don't want to. But I just want to do, make sure there's no harsh edges, no like transitional lines like one, two, 
free. I, I, I wear up to maybe five colors at a time on my eyes, but you would never know that there's five colors sitting up here because it's married together. It's blended together. It's giving me depth. It's creating space that I don't have. If you have a lot of eye space and you want to make your space look smaller, get in your waterline, get it darkened. Get a dark color on the lid creates, makes a bigger eye look smaller. Hence, if you don't want to make your big eye look small, then um, by all means, blend it out, matte in the crease, shimmer, and you will look like you have eyeballs to Mars. I think that is beautiful on women. I cannot speak highly enough about a beautiful eyeshadow that accentuate eyes, no matter what size, what shape. I just love a good eyeshadow look. I mean, and there's no age assigned to eyeshadow look. I'm putting on my Too Faced Glitter Glue. Am I actually using like pure glitter? No, but I'm using a shimmer shade and I don't want it to move around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my due diligence with my glitter glue and tap some on that way i'm guaranteed that my shadow my real shimmery shadow will not fall off my face and drape down here i don't like it when you look at yourself and you've got glitter or shimmer on and you can see it like on your face and your eye socket somewhere i mean nothing makes me more nuts than stuff falling off the eye that's supposed to stay on the eye. So do your due diligence. Use your glitter glue. This one happens to be Too Faced. It's a good product, safe. Um, it works very well. Also, if you want more pigmentation out of your shimmer, spray your brush and it will give you life you didn't know that you had with your shadows. I just spray my brush, no secrets there. Not that I, you know, I don't want to have secrets because uh, I'm not kind of built like that. Plus, well, what fun would that be if I, we had a channel of secrets? So I'm going to use Fairy and I'm going to. Tap it in. Flat means tap, not paint. If you want the most pigmentation payoff out of your your shadows you spent your hard money on. There is the best way to make your shadows perform at their maximum capacity. And that is, use a little glue, use your finger, use a flat brush and pat, wet the brush. That is the way you get the max payoff for shimmer shadows, packing on the color slowly. It's not something you can just like, Tap your brush in, what, what, you're done. It is a little bit of a process, but I wear shimmers even in at 6 a.m. And it's really, it's not that hard to kind of build up and go a little bit slower. Have respect for dark colors and shimmers because you want them to look like they look in the pan, don't you? I mean, I know I do. If I'm looking at a color in the pan and I'm seeing this amazing, beautiful shimmer in my pan, which fairy is, look at that payoff down there. It's amazing. 
And I want the same thing. I want my eye to be like, mm, mm. I'm shimmering to hers. And don't worry about the lines, like, because you're going to go back and blend. The only thing you should worry about when you're packing is just pack it on. And don't worry about it. Then grab your big fluffy. Whichever blender brush that you like. And just tap into your lightest color that you were laying down. And start to blend those harsh edges of your shimmer right on down. It is amazing how easy that tip is, how great it is. It gets rid of anything that doesn't look like it's seamless. That looks so pretty. It's such a pretty palette. Got such pretty colors. I'm gonna switch to a pencil brush. The holy grail of brushes are small brushes. I will say that every video. E36. I'm gonna put some burnt orange on. What gums up must go down. I wanna con oops. connect it all together. I want them to be all connected. I want my lower lash line to connect right on into my top of my eyeshadow. It's a technique. Really makes you look polished, finished, to have the connection between lower lash line and upper right into your eyeshadow. If you want to smudge it, Invest in a good smudging brush. They're at Morphe. You can get a good smudging brush for $2. They're very small. They're very accurate brushes. This is a good smudge brush right here. This is E35. This will smudge all day long. It's quite stiff. It's very precise. Ugh, my nose itches. And it will get you there all day. Okay. What I want to use on my uppers is... I want to highlight my brow bone. I was looking for my... I only use one brush to highlight under my brow bone and in my inner corner. One brush. That's an M213. It has a very soft top. That's why it's very good to use. I'm dipping into Fairy. And I'm putting it on. my Under my brow bone. I'm connecting my two. I just think that this color is so gorgeous. You can use it for brow bone highlight and your lids. I think it looks seamless together. I'm also popping it in my inner corner and look what it's doing for me it's opening up my eye shape it's making me look like a different woman it is crazy what inner corner highlight does for the human face it opens me right up the space here opens when you wear our inner corner highlight there is never a time pretty much when I don't and I run it right into that color there's never a time when I really don't have inner corner highlight on I, I go from very minimal inner corner highlight to blah 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 I'm going to Mars highlight just whatever you're in the mood for I'd be like minimal um, choose a shadow that isn't like bang, 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 and you can just very softly 
highlight that inner corner without shining to Mars like I like to do. There's always options. I'm going to take a, another fluffy, if I can find it, in my pile of brushes. Aha, uh -huh, found it. This one is 533. Now I'm going to lightly dust over. There's no additional product on my brush. I'm doing this because when I put on my brow bone highlight, I don't like, oh, let me precisely, this is what these guys are for. You get your eyeshadow on and then you just blend it. If you got to just take a few extra steps, I'm telling you, it is so worth it. Now I'm going to put on some bronzer and I'm going to use my hourglass. Let me see, which one do we want to use for tonight? Do we want to use the one with the more creamy background, which is diffused light, or do we want to use luminous? This is the one with the more peachy background. I think I'm going to go to, with peach because my shirt, my blouse is black and white. So I think I'm going to make sure I have plenty of color to my face so I don't get washed out because I am very fair. And I'm going to be pulling my hair back, um, slick back like down here, puffy top. I'm going to wrap my ponytail out because my I've got my hair curly right now, meaning I just twist it and kind of scrunch it up put it up on top of my head damp and I let it dry like that and then I take it down and my hair is just like in these perfect curls I don't even really have to mess with it yes I do use some serum hair serum and I use some I always use Kevin Murphy and Suzanne Organics on my head um, neither of them have any toxic chemicals in them of course Suzanne's products are always 100% clean and I always use her Brazilian serum on my hair. So I'm going to have a big, fluffy, whacked out ponytail, slick on the sides, and puffier top to give myself some height. Um, I always take my bronzer into my hairline, and I recommend that even for us old ladies. Ish. I'm going to give myself some cheekbones. Well, cheek, huh? Jaw bones. Mmm, <laughs> Invisalign. Use your bronzer kind of like it's your blush when you're putting it on. Um, when you drop it really low, you can contour with it. Um, yes, thousands and thousands of women contour their face every day. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't talk about it because I just, I don't know, for a mature face, the more products you have on there, the more stuff you have going on, it kind of adds up. So if I dropped a contour color down here and added to the load of products on my face, I've done it. I just kind of think it looks heavy on me um, at my age. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot contour at all. Um, I could contour with some MAC bronzer. I have a very deep MAC bronzer. You can contour with this. I can show you a little bit. I'm just going to do it very lightly. Drop it way down here kind of even with your ear because you're carving out cheeks. I only would ever do it ever so slightly with, I know it's even hard to see in my lighting, but here it is. And it, I also have a palette that can contour um, from Tarte and I do love it. I use it all the time for the lighter shade. Um, I don't tend to contour with it. It's, it's a palette made out of powder. I've talked about it before. 
It is the Park Avenue Princess palette. It is a great palette. And I'm going to put, use this shade right here, the second shade in the palette. It's called Enhance. And I always dust this under my eyes a lot. Maybe not every day, but in my beauty routine or my makeup routine, I do this a lot because I'm bringing color. I'm transitioning. I'm making sure my face has different colors, lighted areas. Um, this palette would be great to contour with. You could drop it low. I'm just not a super contour girl. It doesn't mean you can't contour. I would just recommend that you go easy um, on a mature face. Lashes for tonight, I'm not for sure if I'm going to wear lashes. It's a rather subdued event, so I'm kind of debating the debate in my head. Should I wear lashes? Um, should I not? I'm still having that debate. I'm going to enhance my waterline with my Anastasia pencil and it's literally a highlighter pencil. I just pull and pull down. I'm correcting the redness or anything negative on my waterline which adds, in my opinion, light years to your face. Once you correct those water lines or put a color. Hey, I put color in my water line. I don't think I show that too much here on my channel, but I definitely do. I'm loving this Marc Jacobs um, mascara. My small tube here, I'm going to buy a full size. This is the Velvet Noir Black volume mascara I'm putting just a small coat on because I'm gonna let it dry down and I'm going to add some eyeliner but I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone and then your eyelashes don't have to be perfect that first time that first application just get some mascara on there, let it dry down, let it do its job, and then you'll see when you go in with the product, you know, with more product, that your um, eyelashes will be so much easier to work with with the little dried mascara on them. I'm taking my MAC gel liner, dipping in with my Tarte liner brush and it does not take a lot it's a very nice gel liner and this is a nice brush to work with really love this brush you see how it gave my eye a seat my lashes a seat I call it a seat just because I don't know what else to call it but it's really it gives your eyelashes kind of a place to come out of it's kind of giving you a background per se I absolutely love the purpose of liner and you can wear whatever kind of liner that you like I also use the pens they like well, the ones with the felt tip marker, the Tarte liners. They're great. They dry down quickly. So does this gel liner from MAC. Nothing makes me more angry when I'm trying to put my face on if my eyeliner does not dry down and sit still. Nothing will ruin your look faster if your liner does not dry down and do its job. I kicked out a little ring. No, I didn't go full board. I know how to do big ones. I just want a small wing. 
for my event tonight. No, it's nothing exciting. Um, it's a sad event, so. But I want to look really put together. Really, really put together. I think that's a good word. So, I want to do my technique before I set my makeup. I have my Hourglass palette. This is the Ambient palette. Three different um, highlighters in there. It does sound weird to say, hey, uh, coat your whole face in highlighter. I know, it sounds weird. But I'm telling you, it works for mature skin. Um... In my case, I think it would work for a lot of people. These powders are amazing. Drag your brush all the way across. Tap off. Just light, light hand. Light hand. Very light hand. You see what it's doing for me? It's just giving me the appearance of healthy, dewy glowy type skin you do not want to do this heavy handed because you would not look you would not look right you would look like wow did she walk into a highlighter truck now to subdue that even more now put your blush on I'm going to use osmosis peony because I cannot get over this blush. I mean, I don't know what my problem is, but I am so into this blush color. Get your apples, drag it into your bronzer. Apples, bronzer. Now, I'm going to set my makeup. And I'm looking for my sponge and it's not a sponge it's actually a powder puff I recommend don't use sponge when you set your makeup I'm gonna set with Lila B you can set with Mac prep and prep prep and set I love my Tarte radiance I use Tarte radiance every day when I go to work I want a little bit extra tonight so I'm using my Lila B Now, I literally do this every morning when I set my face. I just tap it into the skin because I don't want little pearls like drying and stuff. So I just tap right into the skin. Now I'm going to um, go back in with my mascara off camera. And I'm done. Yay. I think the look turned out pretty dang good. It's very pretty. It's going to look nice for my event tonight. My skin looks very even covered. My skin, but better. That's what osmosis does for you. So, um, if you like it, hit the like button. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And don't forget to let me know what you guys think about going to the grocery store. Love you. See you in the next video.